Bruh, this show, this goddamn show is the craziest shit I've experienced in a hot minute. This is hands down the craziest episode of Blue Lock yet. Ten episodes and there's a ma majority of them you could say that's shit some of the craziest this season. But the Quan reveal? Like, I was not expecting that red card to demote him so if they lose here he's not gonna progress and I'm like, was not expecting that. But it's the way they're building up to that 5-4 victory which was actually my gut impression after last week because one goal over, you know, just, it didn't make sense, right? Like, you assume that this crazy-ass team with Nagi, Rio would end up getting at least one more goal, meaning our team would probably have to at least get two goals in order to ultimately win. We end this in such a way where we have literal seconds left, and the last moments of this episode just hit after hit after hit moments of being like I can't believe they just stopped that I can't believe they almost did that and it just has you so damn hyped up which is why I do got a full live reaction on the Patreon if you're interested and I highly recommend watching it because it is probably the most fun series I'm reacting to over there but this show is just peak man it is quality the characters the motivations the psycho eyes and to see how a character like Asagi, who, I keep saying it, has the most potential in the future, as it stands, is he the best player? God no. But the way he can make those pieces fall into place, and the way he predicted and just utilized everyone hit after hit after hit to get that goal in, that was some crazy shit, man. And it feels like what we're building up to is my boy, Asagi, getting the goal-winning shot. Like, I feel like that's what's gonna happen, that... You know, we had pretty much at the beginning of this show, he was like the first one to kind of really get promoted and people are like, what the hell? Like, we didn't see that coming. It was probably a fluke. And I kind of feel like what they're going to end with here with the first section of this tournament, this kind of battle royale in a weird way, is going to end with Asagi getting one more goal and it not feeling like a fluke. Like, that seems like the natural progression. The thing I'm very interested in is what's going to happen once they ultimately win this match, right? Because them winning doesn't mean that Nagi's team gets eliminated. Like, that would be their first loss, so they would still get to progress through. The thing is, is I'm very interested, and I've been talking about this for a couple of episodes, and more so after this one, where Nagi's mindset will go, because he's actually playing for himself in this episode. That's the thing that really turned the tables around, because Ryo and the others were kind of shit out of luck. They actually kind of felt like Asagi a few episodes back, almost sweating like, we're about to get eliminated, we can't predict this, we don't know what's going on. And the fact that Nagi woke the hell up and was actually having fun and he was recognizing that the people that I consider trash are now actually doing things that are pushing my team to their breaking limits. So I'm still not sure because I don't remember because when they kicked off Blue Lock, they did drop a lot of information. And I'm going to be the first to admit, I don't remember all the information off the top of my head. So sometimes when they reveal stuff, I'm like, shit, I didn't see that coming. And people might say, well, actually, they revealed it in episode one. It's easy to get lost in all the rules and stuff. So... Once they complete section one, I don't know if they keep the same team. I don't know if they'll reorganize the teams again. I don't want to know. I want to see it in the anime, please and thank you. But I'm just speculating here. That's part of the fun of these videos is just going off my head, feeling like everything that's happening and figuring out what I love about this. And the possibilities of mixing the teams up as they go is really fascinating because now we're at a point where we love the team overall. I mean, minus Quan. Quan, I'm going to talk about, he had a bit of a redemption, doesn't excuse, doesn't make up for anything, and I still think he's going to be one of the first people to go in the second round, don't get me wrong. But I think, in general, Sagi's team, I've really grown to love each of their personalities. So if they do end up mixing and matching teams with, whether some from Nagi's team, other teams, it's going to be really interesting to see how the f dynamics, the flares will kind of kind of light up in this show. And a character like Nagi, who I think has my, my biggest interest right now, he kind of has me hook, line, and sinker because this is a character who seemingly was bored out of his mind, but now someone with that passion, that drive to actually strive to be better... Even separated from Rio now, he would want to survive in this, so that has me pretty eager. Now, I do want to talk about Quan, because here's the thing, when they start playing his backstory, my immediate reaction was an eye roll, because he screwed over the team. Should the team lose here, he'll still get to progress, and I'm like, screw this bastard. However, what the backstory does a good job at is it shows his mindset of how he got so broken, with him trying so hard, his team that promised that they would try hard, 
they ultimately didn't do shit. So you can see how he got there, it doesn't excuse anything, but it shows his mindset of why he's trying to tackle it alone. What I really like what they did here, which normally this would feel bullshit, him at tackling and getting a red card is a cheap move because arguably Nagi had a goal winning shot lined up. The reason I think it's okay, not only because it demotes him so should Asagi's team lose, he won't be the one who gets to progress. What makes it okay is because it was cheap to begin with. They were literally down a player who refused to play, so by almost doing something that takes away a goal, you could also argue had he been playing this entire time, they may have had one less goal to begin with, so it kind of evens the playing field in a weird way that doesn't make it feel like, you know, in normal circumstances, had this happened, you would say, well, Nagi's team should have won. This is some bullshit. This is some power of friendship. Main character's team's going to win because of this cheap play that literally tackled someone at his own cost. But the fact that he wasn't playing this whole match and was trying to sabotage him, it actually kind of evens the playing field in a way I can't really recall seeing in any other sports series, which has me saying, you know what? Not only am I glad that he's no longer ranked number one because the penalty now pushes him down, it also gives them a more even playing field to actually go at it full strength and really give it their all for the most likely Asagi's victory there, right? But that's some crazy shit, like, it just felt like demon time after demon time, and demon time's like the best way to sum up Blue Lock, like these characters get those psycho eyes going, they're doing their crazy maneuvers, and I just love the fact the characters come out of nowhere, whether Asagi, whether Chigiri, and just do these crazy shit that has your jaw on the floor and you... You try to push that job back up, but that bitch is saying, no, I'm staying on the floor because this shit is next level. Like, I said it pretty early into this season, and I had initially some pushback, I think probably from people who either just didn't naturally like the show as much as many manga readers, anime originals, or people who just hadn't gotten to some of the crazier stuff. They used to say, you're overhyping this show. It's not anime of the season. It's not one of the best new shows of this year. But honestly, all I can say, and I think my enthusiasm throughout these videos, the live reactions I do on Patreon, it shows that this isn't just me saying, ooh, this is a hype show of the season. Hell, I'm literally doing this as a fourth upload of the day, meaning YouTube doesn't notify people who have the bell on because I've already done three videos in a 24 hour period. That's how YouTube works. I literally upload it on Saturdays when I could just wait for Sundays, it probably would get roughly the same views. The reason I can't wait that long is because it's my favorite show to talk about every single week. And the amount of passion I have for a sports series, which it doesn't happen often, but when it does man, I can't help but say thank you anime gods for delivering this quality adaptation and I can't thank them enough for not making me wait three months, a year for more episodes because this is a back-to-back -back two core baby and the Blue Lock experience is real, the Blue Lock experience is gonna keep going and this show I think is still gonna be one of the best of next season which is already looking like a packed ass season but I love it man, the enthusiasm should speak for itself, I'm excited to see how they're gonna wrap it up, usually the whole Blue Balls cliffhanger would be something that you're like damn it but I think with only a few minutes left to go in that match I would rather see the immediate aftermath of this match right away so not ending with them getting the goal or anything I think is the right play but we'll see where it goes but of course I'll pass the torch over to everyone what did you think of blue lock episode number 10 do let me know it down below leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new around here like I mentioned patreon full live reaction you can also get video shadows like if you're about to get here so we got Marsh Kyle Kolchuk and Adia Chakrabarty so I appreciate the support everyone please take care and have a good one